Today I am going to answer probably what I'm asked about the most. I'm told I can grow all these flowers and vegetables but I don't know how to create a cozy space in my garden. And worse, I have these really awkward spaces. Well, I do too. And I'm gonna show you five simple steps that I take every single time I'm gonna design the garden. And at the end, I'm gonna do some sketches that give you ideas exactly how to have options in designing that single space you are wanting as a cozy oasis. My garden began like many, with a bunch of grass we had to mow and the typical suburbs garden. Even small little aisles on each side, I wanted to create something that was simple to grow a lot of flowers and food in that area and take advantage of the space I have. All I had was mulch as you can see on the right side, nothing else. So I turned that space into some garden beds for myself. It goes up and down in the height so that I could maximize the sun. And on the left side I did it asymmetrical and created a garden bed that was made with stones. That way it turns into a little oasis that for me functions really well. At the end of this, you're going to have so many ideas to implement in your tiny areas of the backyard that you think you may not be able to get anything out of it. So let's go take a look. This is a step that you cannot skip. It's understanding your why. Each of us have a purpose on why we want to design a space. It could be for many different reasons even if you want it just because you love to see beautiful things. Some of the reasons that you may think of is you simply want to be outside and enjoy the sun, or you love crafting and would like a garden that provides you with what you need to craft, or you just want to have some hats and want to display them outside. I want to learn how to homestead. My immune disease propelled me into examining what I need in my body and what I need to start taking care of myself that I cannot find outside my home. Creating a garden in your why can be something that is super meaningful and is beneficial to you. I love animals and I love raising them. I also love what they provide and experimental with different recipes to feed my family. Another why may be because you just love art and you want to have ways to display it and be in nature as you enjoy them or create them. Or you like to preserve some food, like I love to preserve flowers for my bunny and even for myself in order to have tea in the winter and not miss the beautiful, flavorful flowers. Another reason to use the smaller spaces is you could have a place where you're experimenting, like saving your seeds and seeing what you can get out of your own garden without having to purchase over and over again every year. Your purpose and your reason is your own. It doesn't have to be anybody else's. Whether it's just simply because you love beautiful flowers you keep falling in love with at the store and you want to grow them, there's nothing wrong with that. Now that you understand your why, go ahead and make a list of the five main reasons that you want to create that space. Don't overthink the process. Sometimes it's just the feeling that you want. If you love nature like I do, I want that same feeling in my garden. So it's a matter of replicating the way that you feel when you're out in nature. It may be that you have incredible respect for the animals finding nature and you want to recreate it. In our small gardens in the suburbs, we took away their home and I want to provide it back. So many of us do wish sometimes we had all this space, like people have acres and you think about everything you could grow. I was one of those and we were not able to get what we wanted, even though we really tried for like two years, over two years. But I've realized that the space that I have works so well for me and I've found exactly how to tune it so that I get the most out of it. Sometimes when you have small backyards, it works really well because you're able to tend to every single corner and make it into this beautiful oasis. So don't be sad because you can get all the space that you want and less focus on nurturing the one that you have. 
Sometimes we get stuck on what is the space that we need. But honestly, this little four foot wide space has provided so much for me. So it doesn't matter the space that you have, you can get an incredible amount from that tiny area, even if it's awkward. You will be able to expand your mind and create a zone that is gonna satisfy every single need that you have. I'm gonna show you how to think outside the box when it comes to planning that space. And you will be amazed that you can create something that fits you like a glove and be able to get as much out of it, more than you ever thought you could. What is it that you want out of your own garden? Comment below. And if you found value on this video so far, please give it a thumbs up. One of the most important things that I always account for is what do I see from that awkward space? And I want to treat that as part of that little tiny area. So out of this little narrow four foot corridor, I see a patch and I've decided to grow beautiful flowers on it. Don't look at those walls that make this little space that you're at. Look beyond and you'll be rewarded with incredible views that become part of that small space. I have another corridor that's a little wider, around seven or eight feet. And I knew that in this one, I just wanted nothing but flowers. And that is all I grow. I want a space that feels like my own little secret, my hideaway. And I enjoy it immensely, just as much as the one that I have high activity on. When it comes to materials, stop thinking of interior and exterior. When you're starting, it makes it a lot easier to think about what inspires me. I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. Give materials that inspire you, whether it's a piece of wood, a sculpture because you like the metal finish or the color of it, color of fabrics that you love, just anything that inspire you. I love the wicker baskets and those textures that have sort of a layer and feel alive. So don't be constrained to the boundaries of it needs to be only for outdoor use. We all get inspired by Pinterest and it's a great tool, but you need to also get out and look at the things that the stores do. And the main reason is those local stores create beautiful vignettes. They know exactly how to layer the items that they display to sell it to the customer. So it's great when you go in there and you see what are they doing? What are the scales? Whole different things to see how does it feel? Is the color correct? Is the texture and the paint what I want? How are they layering things vertically to get your attention? What is it out of this videos that really attract your attention? Does anything inspire you? Do you find it soothing? Do you find it whimsical? Do you want the same textures in your garden? Maybe there are items that are colorful and I want to add a lot of color. I need it in my life. Go ahead and take a look at those. You don't have to get anything if you don't want to get it. Maybe there are forms that you like, or you like the more natural look, or the more contemporary look. Get inspiration from the people that know how to do it, and bring that into your own design. Sometimes little touches like pots, plants, colors, even a little twine makes a big difference in the garden. I love the black sculpture, so I look for trellises that had that black to anchor the space to grow my vegetables. And they become little whimsical pieces in the garden that just make me happy. You will learn more about color as you look at the stores and visit them or look on Pinterest. I do have a blog post that talks all about color and I'll link it below so that you can learn a little bit of the color theory and be able to apply in a simple way in your garden. 
but start with the flowers and the textures that you love. I have a rule. I have color, but I also have texture when I do different containers in my garden. I definitely love to layer the pots and be able to add so much interest into them. So you will find little clusters of pots in my garden, whether it's under a tree or by the steps. And I love the texture that is added so that it becomes a little softer to the eye. Clusters of pots really do help whether they're small or larger in size. You could love just very pure one color and tone against the foliage and that is okay. It still looks beautiful. Look at this store. It just has white and the lavender and it's all against that beautiful green. That may be your garden and that may be your style. And maybe you put something that is different textures when it comes to different things like baskets or pottery so that it go ahead and add more interest to the space and you don't have to add a ton of different colors. Or you may be someone that I absolutely do not want to grow flowers and that's okay. Look at different colors of greenery to add to your garden. Always, of course, you're going to check the zone to see what grows best and what you would have to replant. They're still beautiful. Whatever makes you happy, put that on your list. What is the color you're attracted to and what you want it to be the main focus of your garden? And then you can add from there. Even moss in a simple pot can become a statement. Now that you have your why, the materials that you love, add the colors. What are the couple of colors that you want to introduce to be the highlight of your garden? The next step is create something that truly works for you. And I keep saying this because I know it's the hardest thing. We see what somebody else is doing and we want to do it. Sometimes it's just because you want the experience. I love to sow seeds and grow my own food and that's what I want out of that portion of the garden. Your needs may be different on different parts of the garden. So just learn about what is the main thing I want from that one space. I knew for this space that growing food was the number one thing I wanted. I knew it's the space that you pass through to get out of the yard and that it wouldn't be super functional as a sitting area. So I was gonna make it functional for what I wanted out of it. So there is a difference. You have to think about what doesn't function the space for. Is it a storage area that you have to get to? Is it a corridor that gets you somewhere else? That will define what the function is. For me, this is all I wanted from this space. Now on your list add, what is it that will work for you from that one area? For me, was going ahead and having a comfortable enough space to grow plenty of food. List one item, even if you have 10 in your mind, may the main one be the most important one. We know what works for you, but now is the function. How is the space going to function? For me, I'm okay growing on pots, going, growing on the ground. I don't have to have anything raised on this garden. I feel comfortable just feeling more part of the garden itself than the items in it. So I know I have to add some sitting eventually and make it a little more cozy, but right now the function is doing pretty good. The amount of sun I get is doing great and I know that what works for me and what I want out of this space will do fine in this specific area. The function of the space is probably the most critical because even though you know your why and you know what you want out of the space and you're clear on the materials, if you don't understand how it functions, you're not going to get what you want out of it. I have to be very cognizant that the space can look great, but I want something out of it. I want my flowers. I want my vegetables. Yes, I want, want, want. I want the garden to thrive because if it thrives, 
then I thrive. Now that you know that, let's get into planning and showing you a few options on how to think about it when you start planning your garden. Okay, now we have our paper and we're gonna start sketching some ideas that I hope helps you in designing some of your garden little awkward spots. If you're looking for more space planning as far as the garden planning aspect, go ahead and watch the video I'm gonna put at the end. It's a tour of my garden where I go through every single step I take to go ahead and plan exactly what's gonna work. Let's get going sketching some of the ideas for you to implement into your own little garden. I have three examples that I'm gonna go through with you so you can see how the same space can be designed in different ways and you can achieve your goals very easily. I have my words, the ones that I think are gonna connect with what I want in that little spot in my garden. So I'm going to start drawing exactly what I want from the four words that I've gathered. This is a scheme in which I have art as the main focus. I wanna be able to display it. The space needs to feel really beautiful and have a lot of green. So I'm gonna create a very symmetrical design with sculptures around some greenery, make things tall so that there's some height and proportion to the space since it's a blank wall. And in the center, I will do a table and the table will be a place where I can display different things on. And start treating the table, you know, I'll put a mirror or art piece right on the table just like you would in the in interior of the home. On this design, I love just to have everything just be the green color, very sort of subdued and serene, a place where I can just contemplate what I'm doing and not feel like I have to do something. It's just a place to just pass by and just look at beautiful objects or artifacts that I feel I wanna collect when I go out. So you can have a space that is just because. You want a more traditional space, that displays what you love and not have a big reason to have it. You just want to contemplate and look at it. You can develop that kind of space. It doesn't have to be complicated for something that's an action. You can have it just because. On this next option, it can be the complete opposite. Maybe you want a really fun space. You want to kind of explore food, growing food, have really fun colors and be more whimsical, then those are your words that you're gonna apply. So you can do the same idea of having a very symmetrical look, but maybe you have a planter on either side and on the center, you have some kind of form that's more vertical with some pots in front of it. So in front of it, I can't speak. You don't have to make a super clean sketch. You can just draw a line that's super straight so that it gives you a sense of being to anchor the elevation. And just sketch very crudely what you want. Here I'm doing a cluster of pots and little artifacts in there that could be things that have color. And then behind you could put something to kind of anchor the space. It could be a wood frame that's hollow. It could be a metal tubing that you put together. You can color it, whatever you would like to do with it. And either side may have the trellises so you can grow in two planters and that balances the space. But it is important that you think vertically, not only in plan. And then begin to have fun with it. Just go ahead and add whatever you're gonna put in it so you get a feeling of what it's gonna be and the plants can become the color of the space. You still have some height in the center and on both sides, and you have a space to grow the foods that you wanna grow and see how it goes. And the little pots can be things that you add food with trellises, and then you have those lights on either side to add more of a focus on the center. It can become a space that can be fun for you, but be organized in a way and be able to give you a sense of I have a space that I can go, feel comfortable, and enjoy and be incorporated into the things that I do every single day. Always look at everything from the little details that you add to the space and just place them 
Place whatever makes you happy. Place whatever is going to attract you to be in that space. I want to create one more option for you. So in this one, you're somebody who really wants to experiment growing food. You want to have some sense that you're doing something for the environment and you're growing your own food. You want it to be soft and serene, but also be able to sit there on a bench or something so that you can actually take notes and see what you're doing and how you're growing in your knowledge. So the first thing I do is I would do a bench because this is somewhere where you can sit and you can do something where you can take notes and you can make it long enough that you can put things on it. Little art pieces, some little pots and make it interesting. Maybe a little wire basket goes on the right side of it. And then on the back, again, create something that could be a mesh, could be a wire mesh that you can put pots in it. So again, your eye goes all the way to the top. It's not just things on the floor. You want things that go from the top to the bottom. And on both sides to make it symmetrical, I put a large pot on the right and then there will be a sculpture on the left. That way it anchors the middle and that way you can have little tiny pots on either side. And if you want a larger planter so you can grow some food on the left side, it still has a sense of like balance between the two sides but you have plenty of space to grow so don't think that it has to be the perfect traditional space that you saw at the beginning this space still gives you what you need and what you need is can be totally different from the next person but you can see how in the same amount of space I can have so many different options and you don't have to be an expert to come up with that option you can create it yourself. All it takes is you understanding that there's four things that you need. Your why, your materials, what kind of person you are so that you know exactly where you're gonna get out of it, and a physical thing that you need. Take a look at the list I gave you before and create that amazing space that feels comfortable and is always calling you to be in it. Always remember to keep living your dream in that small garden.